For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Wars Outdoors with me, Mike. Today I'm going to go a bit of a pitching video slash tutorial video on a product from Quest. So with me today I've got the Quest Windsor port joining. So throughout this video we kind of go through the process of pitching it. Uh, a, bit, a little bit kind of one directional because of the camera, but I'll kind of give you a bit more idea and show you how kind of simple a kind of traditional awning can be. Um, in comparison to what else is on the market. So first thing I want to do is almost lay the kind of framework out or at least organize the framework just so I can make sure I know where all my bits are. So kind of away that comes. Just put this out of the way. Stop it blowing around. So there are different parts of the framework. What you tend to find is you've got three legs, three kind of um, front points, one being directly straight, so we've got sort of somewhere dead straight, and then kind of outwards from there, really. So, that's that side. So, we've got uprights to go at the back, so we're just going to kind of approximately sort of push them really kind of around about where they're going to be. And then you've got legs. So, we need one leg for the centre, one leg for the right hand side, one leg for the left. And then we've got the physical parts that go up to the van itself. So again, we'll put those in place. That's a rear leg. They are numbered and there is a kind of a pole diagram included with the awning. So you can always check that a little bit straight off the bat if you're not overly sure. And you've got two pieces, the short bars that go in the middle. So just by laying it out, when we kind of feed it through the rail and kind of start doing the processing, everything we need is literally kind of in reaching distance. Now, what we're now going to do is open up necessarily the canvas, unravel it, and then feed it directly through the rail. This method is essentially the same kind of thing regardless of the awning, but we've done several kind of pitching videos on a lot of Quest's range, so you can always check that out if need be. So we'll kind of unravel it, find where obviously the, uh, the beading or the cater is, just open up a little bit from there. So. Now we've kind of got the awning uh, sort of open. Ideally you want probably like a ground sheet or something if you're on hard standing just to protect the awning when you're kind of pulling it, it stops material snagging or getting any damage. Now there's little kind of, uh, we'll call it little awning bracket pads in the corners. So you've got two on either side and one dead middle. You can initially put them on at this point, it makes it a lot easier when you rather than doing it up or high. But we can always, if need be, shift them a little bit left to right when it's up high as we see. So we want one almost directly above the cushion pads on either side and then one dead straight in the middle, there's a seam that runs down the centre, so put it straight away to that and you're good to go. From here what we can do is kind of gather the material up towards the actual van itself. So I find it's easier to kind of keep the material nice and close to the van, almost maybe if anything have it a little bit underneath the van, so when we come to feed it. Life does become easier if you've got a second pair of hands, but you can, as you see now, do it initially by one person. So we just feed that on. By picking up the necessary bit of the weight of the fabric, it just means it slides on a little bit easier. Once you've gotten to a certain point, I find it's easy to come from the inside. What you can almost do is then watch it slide through the rail and make sure it doesn't get caught at any stage. And then once we're physically on the rail, just pick it into position. As we're kind of pulling it, we can just kind of lift it up a little bit, take a bit of the weight and again, try and stop it from sliding out too far. Position it kind of where we want to on the vehicle to make sure you cover enough cover for the door, sort of either side. From this point now, it's kind of a windy day, it's a bit of a gusty day sometimes today. It might be worth on all just kind of putting four pegs approximately outwards just to stop the material kind of coming in on top of you. So it's not something, it's, we'll probably something we'll just we'll move later on in the video, but it's just going to kind of give a little bit of point of call. Cool. I'm just going to go not too far away, just a little bit, directly down from that point there. Put that in initially. Again, it's just going to kind of keep the fabric away as we start the setup. So again, it doesn't have to be like tight or anything. It just, it's more to stop it. So from this point here, now what I can do almost is bring the poles a little bit closer to where they're going in place. 
put the brackets again sort of in place just making life a little bit easier for ourselves. as long as it's reaching distance now because the, there's no pegs or anything in the back of the awning I can nipply inside and we'll start with a center point and from there we kind of build it out so we'll put the vertical as uh, sort of the horizontal pole in first then the vertical and then kind of work out from there and backwards that's the best way of doing it that way it's nice and balanced and because we kind of properly pegged it as well it'll kind of hold in place as well with the tension so by walking myself forward first thing I want to do is almost get the initial uh, kind of we'll call it the cross member in place to feed that directly through the material so it pokes on the outside from there we'll quite nice and neatly use butterfly clips to clip that front pole in and then just bring that down nice and steady before hooking it at the top section up there it's a good point now to get a bit of tension on that initially just because we'll take that tension off eventually but it just keeps that nice and taut everything where you want it to now what we can do is insert that bottom leg directly in clip it in place and just drop the leg down a little bit just so it's kind of a nice easy height to go so from here what we want to do is kind of work our way out so we've got a kind of our cross poles so again we've got a little bit of plain material slide it in like so push the button clip in lock it into place I wouldn't ex we can extend it out a little bit but not too far initially and what I find is quite handy to do is almost have the poles kind of already unlocked just because that way when we need to slide it it's ready to go so now you can see we've kind of expanded it out quite a bit so from here what we can then do is do the same uh, in the top corners so we'll do exactly the same thing in terms of coming up here build it on and put the leg in place again once we've kind of done that and the framework's assembled we can then really start to adjust it so first thing to do of course is put that uh, pole directly in so the, the sort of the T piece in the end and that pole's nice and loose so we've got plenty of play in there clip that in do the vertical directly back up to the top in the top it goes extend it out clip it in and again we'll send that out just a little bit just to kind of keep it there for the time being put the leg pole in and again just approximately put the height where it needs to be do exactly the same for the right hand side so we'll get kind of our little main kind of cross piece feed that directly through pop our thing in the top extend it down clip into place put our cross member in first pull that out and then drop the leg in I mean it's a bit harder to see necessarily from where the camera is but <laughs> hopefully I'm explaining somewhat so at this point here we've got the ridge pole directly down we've got the verticals in we've even got these parts we've got in there already so what we'll probably do now is we'll kind of put the additional front poles just on the actual hook itself what you might need to do is necessarily reduce kind of the stretch in this part here if you're struggling with that so we'll flip that on initially bit easier if need be pull the extension out a little bit so from there pull that fairly so we've kind of loosened it a little bit so we're not quite dead tight but there's a little bit of tension in there the problem what you find is if it's, you have too much tension this point at the front here is actually then you can't get the framework tight to the side there so what we'll now do is then tension that part up and we'll go out from the side tension the sides out a bit more so 
So easier to do the sides first, there's no sort of tension in that initially. Then we'll do back to front. Do the center section. And the other side. From here, now we've got that roof all nice and tight. We can then go about pulling this directly out a bit more. Get the tension in there again. And we can see that roof section is pretty, pretty taut already. The poles are still a quite a, a lower adjustment. Now it's a great idea now to necessarily just take that pole peg and point out. If it's windy again, you probably want to keep it in just for the time being, just because what we want to do is try and get in now as close to the van as we possibly can. So what we're going to do is essentially is kind of get this leg nice and open, screw the brackets on to the top, Velcro the leg down the side itself, and then kind of move it back, peg it back once it's in place and bring it forward. So we'll feed that directly in. So again, just popping that pole. So little wing nuts located in the end. So that goes out. You want to go probably about dead center in the top, screw that on. We can then bring and Velcro it to the main leg. And then all we do is almost kind of fold this excess kind of fabric directly in. And as we're doing that, kick this back pole in a bit more. What you might find you need to do is bring the front part just back in a little bit just to kind of get it nice and tight. What sometimes worth doing is almost pegging around this point as well. Just trying to nip out the side. So you want this to be dead straight in terms of the aisle, so it goes directly down. So like I said, it's a good point now, probably just to peg this back a bit to make sure it keeps the pole in place. So by doing that, then again, we've got a nice solid structure that's pressing firmly against the caravan itself. And then from there, once we've got it nice and tight, we can kind of bring it back out from that section. And then just make sure the legs nicely extended up. Perfect. So that's the right hand side done. Now for the left hand side, same idea. You can back to that frisbee now, do you? So extend that open, undo that kind of wind, the little clamp system, so we can get that into the top section. You know, a slight curvature to the pole, so you want the pole kind of curving towards the actual uh, awning a bit. That way it's gonna press that pad a bit firmer directly towards the actual van. Once you've got the pole vertically up, we can then look at Velcroing it to the side. So it's kind of connecting it to the awning itself. And at the bottom, so it's Velcroed on. So right now it's Velcroed all the way down that side. We can then kind of bring this back in towards the van, making sure it's directly located on. So by spreading that pole vertically up, that's gonna kind of hold that point in place. So from there, we can kind of peg around the actual side. So again, we want this dead straight, vertically down, making sure that's going nowhere. Now we've got the awning quite nicely fixed to the back of the caravan. We can zip all the door panels up, bring it dead square and peg the rest of it out. 
<laughs> Ideally, you want the poles to kind of follow the seams. So we'll bring that base out a little bit more. And we can extend these legs up vertically a little bit more as we go. Ideally, you want to go in about a 45 degree angle with the peg, just to kind of keep it nice and tight. Start by doing either pegs, you get an equal tension across. Again, we want to kind of try and keep that really nice square fixture there. If need be, you can tuck that skirt in place just to make sure we are dead rectangular. So the key thing is making sure you haven't got too much saggage on the side and you can obviously adjust the poles vertically as you see fit. But it's a really good idea if you tuck the draft skirt necessarily in and still give you plenty of area to peg down, then that's usually a great sign that you've got about the height where it needs to be. The next point I would look at doing is kind of the side points by the door, just tensioning that back directly. I'm going from there. You can obviously put the kind of buckle point here at a midway point, so you can uneven take the tension off a little bit or re-peg it quite simply as we go. Now we've done that point here. Let's go inside, just add a little bit more tension to the frame. Just getting that point a bit snugger, lifting it up a little bit. And just trying to get that whole kind of fabric as tight as a drum, which looks pretty good. So from there, just remains the last two pegging points. You've got some extra tie-in points here as well, so you can always buy extra few guy rooms and just kind of buckle it down. The Windsor itself actually comes with a set of storm straps to brace it across the framework, so these kick into place. And then also what you find is it comes with a really nice solid spring, so it got a little bit of flex when you get kind of those windy days. If you wanted to, what you can also do is there's some um, guy points up in the top section so you can peg out and bring that. It's gonna stop the awning sliding around in the frame. And with all the pegging points, really, you wanna kind of cross over the points necessarily. I can always start either side, just to get good tension into the door itself. And then you can kind of work away from there. The mud skirt wants to go on the inside, that way you can actually peg these physical points nice and smartly. It's worth actually mentioning the pegs I'm using now don't actually come included with it. It's kind of our own usual ones we try to do. Just we do all these videos, it's easier to use our own pegs every time. And last but not least, just this one side over here. You're done with it. So yeah, that's kind of the main awning up. Like I said, all there's left to do is really insert the storm strap to give a, a brace across. The materials looking really nice and taut. Other things to also look at, the last thing we would have to do is actually insert the curtains as well. But that in earnest is how we're gonna kind of pitch the Windsor awning. For more information, check the link below this video. It'll take you straight through to our website where we've got all the information you necessarily need, um, as well as a review video we've done on the pro product as well, talking about all the individual features and get a bit more of a better feel for the awning itself. But for any questions, of course, like I said, feel free to email us or comment in the box below. But that's the Windsor awning from Crest. Thanks again for watching, and we'll hope to see you again soon.